Pigeons 420. Mr. Grow It. And Rob from Cannabis Lifestyle TV. From the Stash Podcast. Hey, what's up, guys? Do you want to get your hands on the latest From the Stash merch? Check the links below, get the From the Stash store, and go check to see the latest drop. We appreciate all the support, as always, and we will check you in the next epi. And a huge shout out to AC Infinity, one of the best, if not the best, in air circulation in your garden, from smart controllers to tents to inline fans. They have everything you need to ensure quality performance of your garden. Consider checking out acinfinity.com and using promo code the stash 15 to help save a few dollars off at checkout thank ac infinity for helping bring us today's podcast hey guys welcome back it's thursday man happy happy thursday we've got ourselves a special guest in the house today uh jay chanda sekar i hope i said that properly I he's canadian admit, i I, I said it at least 20 times in the mirror by you myself did, hoping I, get it. I would like video of that oh, um yes no, you, you, you said it great you said it great <laughs> <laughs> awesome awesome well hey thanks for coming man uh it's a huge honor to have you uh we're, we're live right now on twitch for everybody tuning in thanks for tuning in happy thursday everybody i've seen a lot of love a lot of subs in the chat huge shout out to it's be you dig he's actually uh our, our co-producer of the show if you will and he's happy the one birthday. that got everyone together for this uh this epi today so happy birthday to it's be you dig thank you for getting a hold of everybody and getting everybody here for the show today and thank jay for coming in we appreciate you Thank hell you. Yeah. It's be you dig. <laughs> hell yeah. Hell yeah, man. Well, dude, we appreciate you coming on the show, man. There's a lot we want to talk about, of course, but for the first time you come on our show, uh, you know, I'm Rob. That's Chris. Like I mentioned before this show, it's Pigeon 420. We do this uh, every week on Twitch. We're growers, but we're consumers and we love entertainment, man. And when it comes to movies, I feel like I might be the movie buff of the crew. When we had an opportunity to talk to you, Rob, I'm like, holy shit. It's like not only some of my favorite movies, but you've been behind the scenes on a bunch of other projects, too, that really, I think, is going to blow some people's minds when they they hear more of what you've been doing. But, dude, humbling to have you here, man. I really appreciate you taking the time. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. For sure, man. So uh, if I was going to say, Trey, if you want to maybe or Trey, fucking <laughs> <laughs> P, if uh, you want to maybe take away and, and introduce Jay a little bit for the people who maybe yeah. for some reason are ignorant. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, as I mentioned, Jay in the house, uh, you guys may know him from uh, many projects, Super Troopers. Uh, you, uh, you, you've you also uh, produced some movies as well. Uh, Dukes of Hazard, if I'm not mistaken, uh, was was a, a delight to see for myself. That was that's awesome. Um, let us know a little bit about yourself. Uh, who are you? Where are you from? And what brings you to the cannabis community? Well, I mean, I went uh, I, I, I was born in like all the way back. I was born all in Chicago. <laughs> Uh, and I grew up in the suburbs of Chicago. I went to Colgate University, um, where I, you know, I, I smoked weed for the first time when I was in high school. Um, um, nothing happened the first time. The second time I got it. Uh, and then, uh, by the time I got to college, you know, my roommate in college was, uh, I mean, he, he sold weed, uh, and, <laughs> So we had visitors often, and every time they'd come, they wanted to smoke with the guy who was selling it because they wanted to make him feel like he was just one of the, just a friend. And so there was just this endless weed smoking in my room, and I was there, and I'm like, yeah, I'll smoke this. And so I ended up basically smoking almost every day of college. And, it, you know, obviously after I left that roommate and you know, it was just, there was a lot of weed going on in, in school. And, and so our senses, you know, like there was, you know, there's a certain sense of humor that goes along with that. Um, uh, and, and, uh, you know, Broken Lizard uh, was started at Colgate. It was, it was actually originally, it was, it was called Charred Goosebeak there. There's still a comedy group there called Charred Goosebeak. And uh, we would smoke weed and we'd write jokes and uh, write sketches and and you know weed has been a very big part of our humor and it continues to be like we we will um you know write a script and then we'll uh 
we'll rewrite it six, seven, eight times. Then we'll smoke some grass and, and read the, read the lines and we'll add jokes and we'll add jokes and we'll kind of discuss concepts and we'll do a new draft. And, you know, we, we, we use it occasionally just to sort of jack up the jokes uh, and then we'll get back sober again and write the structure again. And then we'll do another, you know, weed pass. And <laughs> it's been, you know, we figured if, uh, if we get high and laugh at something uh, while we wrote it, that people will connect on, on that primal level and they will laugh at it when they smoke it and watch it. That's sort of our theory. I think you're right. I think that's oh, fair yeah. to say. I, I kind of do the same thing. And I, 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 like I don't think it's a shame to laugh at yourself. You know, I think if you're laughing at yourself, I think it's, you know, I, I, I think there's some, some humility in that. And I think there's some validity. Well, um, it's, it's really a matter of the only thing you can do is have an opinion as to whether you think, where the, you know, if I think it's funny, some other people are going to think it's funny too. That's sort of the whole game. You know, if broken, if we think it's funny, then there are going to be other people who think it's funny. That's it. That's how we do it. That's I we agree. Don't try to make something funny for you. We try to make something funny for us. That's a great start. That's a great start. And I'm glad you mentioned Broken Lizard too, because this there's this might actually be coming to life, right? Or is coming to life? Has come to life? In the terms strain? of uh, the weed. So the, the weed is the whole collective. Is that like the whole Broken Lizard crew a part of you guys bringing the uh, the herb to life from the movie, or is oh, this just well, your individual venture? No, no, no. Uh, we have a weed brand named Smoking Lizard. Smoking um, Lizard, I and, love uh, that. You know, we're we're you <laughs> we and we you know it's for sale in California and I believe soon New Jersey, uh, and we're using that weed um, strain to write uh, Super Troopers Three, and the theory uh, we've got is that if we write it on this exact strain of weed when we make and release the movie we're hoping people will smoke this exact strain of weed and then unlock the real comedy of this movie that's uh, brilliant that's the I, idea I love it. that's brilliant that's i'm all that's over that smart. yeah i'm all over that you we'll tell see me if any... it works we'll see if it works i think it works. i'm sold i'm sold okay. yeah no that's great that's a very exciting and i great to hear super troopers three too man that's uh that's a yeah. good cult hit man i, I i'm a huge fan yeah I'm, online um, is it winter soldiers am i, I think yeah it's I read on the... three winter soldiers okay I mean, so that wasn't all, fake news okay we've okay. got all sorts of like you know uh icicles on mustaches jokes <laughs> <laughs> hell yeah man it's gonna be a good one i'm excited yeah i watched the last one and i love how it's i feel like it's more and more catering to the cannabis community and and that for me, I feel like it always has been. Stoners have loved it, but now it's become more acceptable amongst the world. So it's nice that that the comedy could kind of tailor to that too, even more open without so much passive uh, cannabis remarks. You know, I think it's really cool that we're seeing comedy that's been this way for a long time now being open about their use in cannabis and being able to get into the actual legal market without scrutiny and people fucking with you as much. You know, it's yeah, really cool. yeah. I mean, it, you know, it's been a big big part of our creative process so you ever find you, know. you ever found any hurdles to that like we like we are youtubers uh not really on the same level but we 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 get a lot of pushback because of our, our cannabis consumption the fact that we promote growth uh growth of the plant and the growth as a, as a human being do you ever find that you get pushback because you're so open about using cannabis as a creative tool no Good. Uh, I'm glad to hear that. No, I, 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 I believe that, um, you know, when you can speak honestly, it, uh, it sort of uh, takes the fangs away from your critics because you're just saying what's actually happening. I mean, it's just no. a real thing. It's, you know, I'm not advocating that, um, young people smoke it. I didn't, I didn't say that. I, I just said I did. Um, right. That's all. And, and we're selling it legally. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's mm -hmm. like, we're not even really that much into it. Like we're partnering with the group and we're, we're, you know, we're selling smoke and lizard weed. It's, it's um, I don't know. Like I, who do you get pushback from? 
Uh, well, we have bigger powers. Uh, what you know, YouTube is, hates weed. Oh, yeah, that's too. what they I do. Yep, yep. Well, see look, I mean, they're a private company. They're a private company, and they, uh, yep. <laughs> the advertisers, they can do the same thing. It's up to them. I, you know, like we don't really, we don't really expose ourselves to that. Uh, I mean, we don't have anybody over us like that. So smart, you know. right? That's really good right. to hear. You're able to do what you want to do, and you know, taking a step back, it really does help the big picture. You know, as far as normalizing it, you showing in the movies and being open with it, uh, it's normalizing the movement. And as we're all probably proponents of legalization, you know, as of right now, it's kind of all over the place between state to state, country to country. But uh, that's helping normalize and will hopefully help the legalization movement in the future. So, it, yeah, it's silly to be illegal in my view, uh, but I. You know, it's legal in California. It's not legal in some other places, and and that's fine. I mean, everybody's entitled to their local government, you know. But um, I, I I feel like uh, there's a lot of like good tax money that can come out of it that can support schools and and safety and all these sort of things. And by the way, whether it's illegal or not, people are already smoking it. So it's like, <laughs> yeah. And have it's sort of making a rule. Like, it's like, you know, if it was illegal to masturbate, you're like, well, you know, <laughs> gonna gonna do do it, do it. I'm going to do it with both <laughs> hands then. Forget about it. Yeah. 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 No, I, yeah, I, I good. I'm, I'm glad to hear that because you said it. We, we do have someone over us. Uh, we're, we're YouTubers and we are, we are dependent upon the platforms. Yeah, I mean, they built we, a cool platform. They don't want you smoking weed. Okay. Well, you that's the way it is. It. That's just the way it is. That's good. And it's nice to know that, you know, should we break out of this, you know, uh, ceiling, you know, it's that there is a, there's, there's an, a free mind or I guess a, a, a good, a, a good opportunity, a free opportunity to mm -hmm. succeed. Um, yeah. That's I, I, now to bounce to, you've got another, you've got an app that's, uh, that's dropped as well. Um, so, you want to explain? Yeah. Vouch on that? This is a great, great idea. I like this. <laughs> Thank you. 20 years ago, super troopers, was in Sundance and we were the toast of Sundance. Everybody was watching that movie and loving it, discovering it. And then a year later it came out in the theaters and um, Rotten Tomatoes, the score, uh, fresh score was uh, 90, uh, was from 90 reviewers and they gave it a 36% fresh. And I was like, how could that be? I mean, you, you had to have seen everybody at Sundance. I mean, what happened? Yeah. Right. And, and, you know, the New York Times reviewer later reviewed uh, The Hangover and he's like, I didn't really like it. And I'm like, well, OK, you didn't like Super Troopers and you didn't like The Hangover. Do you like our rated comedies? And I'm like, what is what is going on? Like what? Like who are look, they're great reviewers, right? They're great writers. They're, they know a lot about film. I get it. Um, I like a lot of them. But at the end of the day, like. This reviewer is just somebody who had got a job at a at a newspaper, right? So they're like, they're a good writer who got a job at a newspaper. And and but they're strangers, right? Do they smoke weed? Do they drink? Did they go to college? Did they uh, do they like R-rated comedy? You don't know any of it. They're just strangers. And so when's the last time you walked up to a stranger on the street and said, Hey, what movie should I see? You don't Pointless. do that. Right. Yeah. But now we've got Rotten Tomatoes. They take 90 strangers and they say, hey, what's all these 90 people? What's your opinion? Give us a number. Boom. 36 percent. We got a review for for Beer Fest um, from a woman named Grandma. Her name is Grandma's Reviews and Grandma's Review of Beer Fest. She was out of Arizona. She said, you know, I didn't really like Beer Fest. There was too much drinking. And I'm like, Grandma, Beer Fest is an ode to binge drinking. Like we love yeah. binge drinking, grandma. <laughs> That's why we made it. But no, that goes into our Rotten Tomato score. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, this, I can't take it. And so I, 20 years ago, I was like, I'm going to get revenge on Rotten Tomatoes somehow. And I stewed for 16 years. And four years ago, I started outlining an app. And I'm like, this app is going to be a way for when movies come out, instead of listening to this Rotten Tomatoes score, you're going to be able to listen to your friends and their opinions. So I, me and these two guys, uh, Eli and Eric, we built a machine, an app called Vouch Vault. It's in the Apple store. It's in the Android store. Vouch Vault. Go there. Follow me, J. Chandrasekhar. And what it is, is it's the Instagram of recommendations. Okay. So they follow me, you know, Seal. You guys know Seal, the singer? Oh, yeah. Yeah. He oh, yeah. Just signed the up. Soundtrack. You can follow Seal. Like, and, and basically, you'll hear, you go into my thing, I say, I like 
Reservoir Dogs. I like Pulp Fiction. I like the book, The Epic of New York City. I like um, this sushi restaurant in Studio City. I like the Tesla car. Anything you like, you put in this vouch vault and you vouch for it, right? So it's just like, you know, you know, like this book, hold on. This book about the making of Caddyshack. I read it. It's great. I vouch for it. Somebody else vouched for it and I saw it there. I'm like, no, that sounds kind of good. So now if you if somebody recommends something that you haven't seen yet, you just click a little ribbon and it goes into your tri vault, right? And so now, on, uh, you know, on a, instead of writing these little notes in your phone, oh, this, this sitcom on BBC Three is supposed to be good. You just stick it into your tri vault. And then on a Friday night where you're like, what should we watch? You look into your tri vault. You're like, oh, yeah, this, this thing That's is sitting dope. right there. And so I'm, I'm trying to create a new way to look at how movies and, and television and podcasts and, and just so, so that it's like, in, you, you can follow me. You don't really know me, but you can follow me. You can trust my taste in movies, fine. But you should follow each other. And you guys are like, hey, right. this is a great strain of weed. Hey, this is a great bong. Hey, this is a, this is a great movie about weed. This is a great book about whatever, right? This is a funny book. Anything you guys like, it's friendship, right? And, and that's the way that we really, it's, it's sort of like you go to a dinner party, right? You never go to a dinner party and go, hey, what sucks? What shouldn't I see? <laughs> yeah. You know? The only one knows Not what's us. good. What's yeah. good, right? So, that so one that's guy. the whole thing. It's, it's a vouch vault, what you vouch for. And so, you know, we've been up for about six weeks. We got about 3,200, 3,500 people on it. And it's, it's going to be, it's going to be something. Oh, oh, that's, totally. that's so cool. That's not just movies that you're able to do more than that. I mean, vote for cannabis, for example, I just downloaded sure. it on my phone right now. Me too. Everybody who is on Twitch, download it right now. And then if you're watching this on YouTube, download it. Vault, vault, vouch, 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 vault. 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 <laughs> Sorry, we smoke a little, a little bit. Twist yeah. it up. And, uh, <laughs> it's, a, it's, a brilliant, <laughs> it's a brilliant idea. We already do this. You're right. I don't go to somebody on the side of the road and I'm like, yo, what's your favorite weed? You know, I, 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 I'm going to go <laughs> no. to a friend of mine and I'm going to be true. like, yo, that's some crazy weed, man. Well, you not just that. What is that? Or I'm it gonna... goes for movies, sports teams. It can go for any. We already do this. Yes. Now we can have a hub where I can do this with people where I can follow Rob. I'm like, I'm interested in what Rob thinks. That's He's big right. on fighting. You know, it's like, I want, what does he vouch for? Well, you know, I want to know. So yeah, you're damn right. So I'm going to be all over this. And right. it's smart, man. It's smart. Yeah. This is, See, a, and that's, this, this is, is the kind of stuff we need more shit is for the community and user generated things that aren't so owned by a corporate entity or paid for reviews like we have people who will, will sponsor our shows and by no means are we going to be like this is the best product ever but some people literally request that for a sponsorship it's like that's not an authentic review we're not going to do that but so many celebrities and influencers do that kind of shit so it's hard well, to trust the word of true. anybody for recommendations it's true and i mean even if you look at yelp you're like the mm -hmm. restaurant review is great the restaurant is terrible and, the, and you're like well who wrote that terrible review? Was it yeah, the, right. was it the guy with the restaurant across the street? Uh, exactly. Who wrote yeah. the good review? Was it the guy who owned the restaurant? Like you know, you're like I don't know. And and yeah. it's just on Amazon, you're like I don't, I just don't know these people. But if if my friend says, hey, this restaurant's good, I'm like, great, I'll go. I know that guy. He likes good restaurants. Like that's, that's as it. simple as that's it is. That's fucking and, awesome, man. And it's you know the celebrity thing. You're right. You know, like if but if you are a celebrity and you get on vouch vault and you're vouching for a bunch of stuff that's not good. People you're going to be exposed. Like, people are going to be like, eh, well, I'm they're not, not going to vouch. They're not going to well, vouch for it's them. It's not like an Instagram post that's a 24 hour thing because you're paid for it and then you delete it off of your shit or like these yeah. random cryptocurrencies that have the celebrities in pump and dump, you know? So yeah, that's cool, man. I really like that. And I think, again, as cannabis gets into that side of stuff where people can have that more because you're seeing we, um, like weed maps and leafly and all this shit yeah. like that half these reviews are paid for reviews i know people who are doing it and it's like you can't trust most review sites nowadays because they're being exploited but like this since you can connect with an, an individual yeah. that's we need more of that kind of stuff it's tough it's because everything is hollywooded out and everything is gimmicky so people don't know what's real and what's not yeah so then when you have more of the user generated content it's it's hard to to lie about that shit. yeah it, there's you know, nothing take, in my vouch fault that i don't actually like Cause I'm like, I'm not putting that. Why in would there. you? Yeah, <laughs> I'm not. that's right. It I don't takes, want anyone to think I like that thing. It takes the anonymity of the reviewer and puts them first. The review. It's about the reviewer now. That's you right. know, it's yeah. That's and right. I, I, I like that. I, I'm gonna start vouching for things. Big brain shit. 
Yeah, yeah. Because I, I know that I, I know that there's people that I look up to, and I'm curious. You know, what do they think about anything? You know, about and, anything. Yeah. Tag or thick ass glass. Use discount code the stash at checkout to get 25 percent off on any of your pieces, whether it's a water pipe, an oil rig, or something like a regular hand pipe. They got you covered. Quality, build, and function is what Tag is all about. When you're looking for a quality piece that you're going to have for years to come, thick-ass glass is the way to go. Now myself, you know I'm not normally a glass guy, but man, when I got this piece, I finally realized I was missing out on quality glass. It's a big difference from stuff that you get overseas that is just not quality made and not going to be something you have long-term versus something like a thick-ass glass piece. So if you're looking to upgrade your smoke game or just get yourself another piece to add to the collection, use discount code the stash at checkout for thick ass glass at thickassglass.com. About anything, about anything. You know? Here's one thing I want to think about that I want to ask what Jay's thinking about. And I almost ruined it for everybody on the show by asking beforehand. What about Weed Fest? This is the question most of us have been wanting to know. Beer Fest was Beer Fest was one of my favorite fucking movies. You know how many like beer games have been created via that and inspired from that? Like most of my <laughs> allegedly teenage years don't recall most of them because so uh <laughs> beer like, fest. Yeah. now if we can get weed fest yeah you oh, know it was God. a joke at the end and we didn't think we didn't think much of it but then you know willie nelson was like when are we making weed fest uh, and then snoop dogg was like when are we making weed fest cuz and i'm like <laughs> yeah yeah you're right we should and you know we'll see what happens. It, it, there was a, there was a changing of the guard at Warner brothers uh, who owns that movie. And um, the new people uh, didn't want to make movies with the, uh, with the people before, which is ah, us. Shoot. But now there's a new group oh. of people in charge and I know them. And uh, I'm going to call them up and say, you know, cause I've been calling the Warner brothers and be like, you know, we probably should make weed fest. And they're like, yeah, no, nah, you're the old guys. But uh, the new people who are in charge now, I, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping to uh, get that going there. I, I really believe in my heart that it will be made. Dude, with how commercialized cannabis has gotten at this point, I, I always say the word, we're going to definitely be demonetized on YouTube, but how often it's become mainstream. I mean, it really shows that now of any time in history, would it make sense before I could see it being a little scrutinized and people right. not being Absolutely. into it. But now with so many places that are legal in America alone, let alone the entire country of Canada. Yeah. It's like, I mean, look, we've, we've written 20 pages of it. It's not like it does. It, it exists. It exists. Oh, that's it's exciting. Just, uh, we just want to write it. If we're really going to make it, you know, it like, we don't want to like write it. Was the IP owed that because of Beer Fest? I mean, I don't want to get too well, businessy, but like, I, or could it be I, a separate entity? It could be, but I believe that the funniest version of it might be where it's the same guys from Beer Fest. Yes. I, yeah. I, yes. Think, I think that's yes. the funniest version of it. I mean, obviously I it's us, but I mean, it'd be nice if it was Barry Badrenath and Weed Fest. You're like, yes. Oh, it keep that storyline going. It, it really, and see, that's the thing too, is like, I feel like from Club Dread to, uh, fuck, I've seen so many of your movies. Slamming Salmon, that's another one, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean, yeah. so many of your movies. It's crazy, dude. It, there's so many things. I feel like the jokes kind of play off of each other a little bit. So yeah. like the comedy, because it's you guys and the brains that you put together, it's like if you watch it as a whole, they all fit as in like the universe. You know what I'm right. saying? The Broken Lizard universe. So like right. this could fit in even if it was new characters. I'm just saying. Yeah. It would, if you had some of the jokes and the shit from the past, like all of us fans definitely would be like, this is part yeah. two of Beer Fest. And the time is now. The time yeah. is now. Like the people need a good weed movie. We're pushing it, dude. Right now because yeah. it's like, what was the last one we had? That like, shit with, what is it? Uh, uh, Wiz Khalifa the, and fucking Cooper's Snoop too. did that one. And then there was that other shitty one. How high two they ruined. Oh, that was terrible. Terrible. Yeah. Terrible. Yeah. I didn't see that one. Oh, good. I didn't see that. I didn't uh, even know there was a two. Yourself. They put like other people in it. It had fucking uh, oh, see, that's, what that's what Jay's shit. talking about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah see and that's where you need the original people because that's people yeah. want to follow yeah. those people you can't you can't you can't do a how high two with different people no right right no. Or, oh. a beer fest two with a whole new group like some college kids like this is like like how american pie does these new spinoff ones and shit uh, yeah, yeah. No, no. No, no, no 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 well once Ruin. weed fest does come to fruition you've got uh three actors right here that you can potentially <laughs> next to <laughs> or extras in the background you know i'll be, I'll be sure. okay. i smoked weed once i did i've it once. smoked weed before <laughs> yeah dude see and and with all of the the creative stuff you've done like with club dread it was like a, a horror comedy type of thing have you ever thought about like venturing off kind of like um 
believe Jordan Peele's doing that with a bunch of horror movies and stuff. And I know you've written a lot of stuff and directed a lot of other things, but have you ever thought about like a, a serious Broken Lizard movie? Is that ever in the the mix? I I think that uh, I mean Jordan is doing great shit over there with that with all that horror stuff, and I think that's his true love. Although he's such a good comic, I mean, he's I know. such a funny guy. But I think that you know. I, the reality is this it's like what Jordan uh, Peele did is it's surprising that he was able to succeed you know like it, it generally the way people see you the first time is how is what you are forever you know so like if we suddenly made a serious <laughs> broken <laughs> lizard movie people would be like the fuck are these guys doing it's like when Adam Sandler did that for a while. People were like, Spanglish, the fuck is this? Right. Well, you know? but he, there were jokes they, in Spanglish. And it was yeah, see, funny. it was like a... You know, like... A, but I, I get I, the pivot from yeah. comedy to horror. You know, That's like, a dramatic well, shift. Well, it's... Yeah. But I mean, even those horror movies that he makes, some of them are a little funny. I mean, not... I mean, Get Out was funny. The next one was not us. Was dark, <laughs> no, dark. It's very dark. <laughs> uh, but, but anyway, I mean, I, I don't think... The, in addition to the fact that I think the audience would be confused, uh, I think the stu studio and anybody who would give us money would be like, no, no, <laughs> no. If we want, want serious movies, we'll, you know, we'll do a movie with Gwyneth Paltrow or somebody right. who's who can, you know, known for that kind of thing. Matt Damon or whatever. But you guys tell some fucking jokes and get out there. You know, I yep. mean, they don't, they don't. Uh, by the way, we don't really want to do it either. I mean, you know, we. <laughs> We would, if we made a serious Broken Lizard movie, we'd be the first in line to make fun of us. Right, right. Yeah, that's, that's good. That's it'd good. be a good movie. It'd be a good movie, right. but it'd, it'd still be, be a like banger. Meaningless. <laughs> I mean, nobody would want it. Well, and you guys being more comedic minds, it's like, it wouldn't make sense. It just depends, I feel like, the person. When you get, I wouldn't say typecasted in a side of, of thought process, but like, I'd know you guys for comedy. No question. You know what I'm saying? So I would be waiting for that. That funny yeah, and it's like when jim carrey did that it. majestic movie that was like yeah where's the face yeah you're like Nothing. what yeah what 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 am i watching but yeah. that said if i were cast in a serious movie i i would do that like i got i got sent a movie recently it's like a horror movie and they want me to be uh a guy in this horror movie um it's like a thriller horror movie and there's no jokes <laughs> and i'm like oh, I, might, I might do that yeah. but i mean it's uh it's uh it's not a broken lizard movie it's just, yeah right. like a right. in indie kind of cool horror movie right wouldn't well, turn down the opportunity but no i mean i'm an actor i mean you know right. i acted in a right. bunch of plays dramas in high school i've been you know i've been death of a salesman and all these all these things so i mean i I can do it. It's just not, you know, if it's us, it's it, we got to at least attempt to make fun. Sense. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Well, and like if, if you look at how media is changing with everything being uh, straight to streaming, I remember before when you see like straight to DVD, people were like, oof. And now everything's skipping movie theaters and exclusive on Paramount Plus and all these different things. Has that made the demand for more content increase for you guys or, yeah. or the, the option where you could do demand, more shit? There's a demand for more. Um, I still prefer the theatrical, uh, thing of it all. Um, and I'm, you know, my, my last film Easter Sunday came out in theaters. It's out right now. Mm -hmm. Uh, I made it with, with the comedian Joe Coy, who's, you know, filling Madison square garden and, and, and the funny forum. guy he sells three nights out at the forum. The dude's a phenomenon, but I, I prefer that because I think it's more, I mean, there's more of an event around it. Like if we made Weed Fest, we'd want it in the theaters, you know, so people could yes. get high, go to the theater and laugh together, you know. But it's yeah, you're nostalgia. Right. There is a need for more stuff, you know, like they, these companies of all, you know, if you remember Amazon, they were just a package delivering company. And then they were like, now they're making movies and television. And Apple is a computer company. Well, now they're making movies and television. Everybody knows what we know, which is that stories are what humans are most connected to. And uh, if you can tell people stories, uh, they're more likely to have you send packages to them. Or if you can tell people stories, they're more likely to buy your computers, I suppose. Absolutely. Uh, or your weed. Or your weed. Or your See, weed. And, and wasn't, um, 
maybe I'm just stone, which I am because it's great. But wasn't Super Troopers 2, didn't that go to Crackle before it went to other platforms? No. No, where uh, was that? Uh, it went to one. No, it was in no. movie theater, but then afterwards, I think it went like exclusively instead of it spreading out everywhere. Didn't it go to? I remember it, I, I downloaded something to watch on it. HBO. It was HBO Max? Max. Yeah, I, don't even I remember know. I paid. I, really... I specifically paid extra to get a 30,000th fucking streaming platform just to watch that movie. And I've been on it ever since. But like, that's where I'm saying. Like, there's so I much. Mean, shit if, to if, do. I'm not saying it wasn't on Crackle. I just don't know about it. No. <laughs> oh. like, I wouldn't. They don't call me and say, "Hey, we're putting it on Crackle." Uh, I just—it's very possible, but uh, but it uh, <laughs> once it comes out, I'm like, "Have fun, send me the check." Go yeah, because um, yeah. uh, they want to sell it, sell it everywhere they can. That makes I remember sense. it came out on 420, and me and my roommate got blitzed. We got <laughs> stoned out of our mind and went there. Per- great idea to release it on 420, right? Yeah, Did it. <laughs> I got that the same memory. The studio came up with that idea. They were like, what about if we take the holiday over? <laughs> no one else has taken it. Let's take it and Good make it them. your fucking holiday. We're like, Mark. and they did. Idea. I got memories again. Now we're Good going to idea. see it, man. You know? Yeah. Good idea. Oh, yeah. It, it oh, opened yeah. to number one. You know, yeah. all, the, all the stoners were like, yeah, it, it kind of just kind of made sense. Right. They're That's like, right. Oh, great. Well, look, we don't have any movies nowadays catering to the cannabis community that aren't like shit most times you know and like as iconic movies super troopers is always one that's right there in the list literally with cheech and chong and with how high and with all the iconic weed movies over time half baked so it's like it's one of those things where sometimes you're like if it if it ain't broke don't fix it but yeah. like fuck the community wants more and more and more i feel like it's one that could have like eight of them and it could be oversaturated and we still would laugh our asses off because it's yeah. literally catering to us grandma's I mean- boys another one Sindor, yeah my fit yeah grandma's boys out That's another one. yeah uh, pineapple express i mean yeah yeah great movie yeah but we've got yeah. like 10 you know what i'm saying there's not like an yeah. endless but, list like gangster from 15 movies. years ago yeah you know what yeah. i mean like yeah. i think that's it's probably you. even longer now that i think about it but you know it's like we are itching for something you know and so okay guys we'll make it. Fest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we want it <laughs> uh, no you will you will sell a lot of tickets when that comes out no yeah. question I gotta, I gotta ask jay this is from the stash podcast We're, we are a grower community now of course we smoke a lot of weed but i've got to ask um have you ever grown or do you grow or you look you interested no, in growing you don't have time? i don't grow um you have people that grow for you yeah, I, I don't know how to do it. Like I, I teach you, bro. Uh, I know, I know, I could learn how to do it, but the problem is, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm writing a novel, right? I'm writing screenplays. I do stand up. I'm gonna start a podcast. I'm like, I have this app. I'm like, and I play golf seven days a week. So family, I, Good I, I, yeah, I don't, I don't have the time or the bandwidth to do it plus people give me weed everywhere i go so i'm <laughs> like i don't have the need either so you know like i just i just don't need and we have a weed brand so it's, yeah <laughs> i don't know i just you've I never don't need to so you've, you guys. you've never put a seed to soil before never uh, no real uh, need to shit you're living good uh, I, I, my friend grows it in his backyard and he just ha- mm-hmm. he has these fucking bushels of it and i'm just like uh, you go over there he's like here's some here's like here's some more yeah here's a bunch and i'm like i don't need it but okay i'll stick it in my thing <laughs> oh yeah you know I, I just um uh it's just you know uh, everyone's got a path they go down and i, I don't uh, this one's not mine i won't be i don't think i'll ever grow it then you well, said it man there's it there's it, there's different strokes for different folks yeah 100 yeah, yeah. percent when you got to think too, like in this case, being the demands of, of current culture with social media, with, with, I mean, things like this, you're on our podcast online, you know, there's more demand than there was, let's say 20 years ago, where you'd have something scheduled and you know when it's going to happen, you're flying to it. So you almost can't sacrifice more time. Time is something that you can't measure financially. And it's like, that's, I'm, I feel like I'm time poor lately. So I'm it's trying so to. So well put. You're yeah. exactly right. There's yeah. not enough time to do all the things I'm trying to do. Yeah. So I certainly can't be out there with my hose, you know, hosing down this weed crop, which I yeah. can't have. Well, so how are you, are you guys then licensing out your uh, your brand then to different commercial grows that you guys you know, associate with in the different we like, in New Jersey? Uh, and- we partner with a with a group called Vacation Brands uh, Weed, and um, yep, familiar. And we uh, basically what we did is we we went up to their place and we um, and we 
tested it. We smoked this, we tried this, we tried that. We're like, we wanted it to be uh, a weed that was like, uh, made you laugh and made you think of funny uh, ideas. That was the, that was the goal. And so we, you know, we tried some various kinds and we tried some blends and we decided on this particular brand of, uh, or whatever, this particular strain of, you know, mostly sativa, really. It's like, it's just, um, it's it the works. cerebral right eye, you know? Yeah. yeah that that creative, right. I've, you know, I, listen, I don't, I'd love to get you in Michigan, man. I feel like we, I mean, personally, yeah. directly, I work with a commercial grower who does this kind of shit, but company like this is where the celebrity brands when you see not knocking them but like i see getting into it lil wayne's got weed mike tyson what but then when the guys from super troopers have weed that kind of <laughs> now makes you got my attention sense. like if method man and redmond have weed that makes more sense uh -huh. currency like these stoner people yeah right I, yeah i can get behind that because they're going to go Khalifa consume bud? the fucking product they're going to actually smoke right. the weed to let you know if it's good they're not just going to give away their brand in a licensing deal no you know, it's not worth that. smoking the reefer because we already make movies and television it's not worth it to us to just put our name on something like who gives a shit about it's not that about the buddy yeah you guys not when you've built this you know this isn't just something to throw away we're, we're yeah. talking about you you built a brand here that isn't is not only recognized but is respected by many worldwide dude uh, it, you could quit doing what work. you're doing today and still go down as iconic we had tommy <laughs> chong on the show dude no no bullshit and i, I feel weird when people say that shit to me about our content too so i maybe mm -hmm. could get that but like it, we don't have many people who still cater to this community it's like right. they kind of play on this community and they know they can get money here so they'll they'll throw stoner jokes out they'll hit a joint here and there but they're not right. really in this shit it's like i feel like right. you guys are really catering to us man and that's major respect we don't have enough of that well you know, we're, we're, I say it again, it's been a major part of our writing process. Uh, and separate of that, it was a major part of our just uh, nightly habit. Creative process, uh, it just, sounds like. You know, we just, we used to smoke weed every night, right? I mean, before we even wrote jokes, we were smoking weed every night. And then we started writing jokes and we're like, you know, we should smoke weed and then write jokes. And we're like, well, that really works. And then, you know, these kind of, because we every movie we went to, we were getting high too. And we're like, well, there's a connection here, right? There's a connection between writing it and watching it and making it. And, you know, when we shoot, we're not, we don't smoke weed because you, you got to, you know, there's a lot of, <laughs> you got to, you got to have place. your brain. Study high, get high scores. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't direct high. I wouldn't, I don't even, you know, I don't Dude. do any of that, but, uh, you know, you, I don't know. I you could, I suppose. I just don't do it. But there's um, a time and a place, and it's it's for some and not for others. Yeah, and... we 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 you know we're more. We just we just have gotten good at using it uh, to generate uh, 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 laughs. It's a tool. Yeah. It's a tool, and I really think that whether you're <clears throat> using it as a tool to you know inspire your creativity as a group, you would use it as a tool to kind of maybe in, uh, kind of break down your anxiety before you got to go out into a group function or something. You know whether you've got to use it as a way to alleviate the pain so that you can throw the ball with your son just a little bit longer or play or daughter. sports. You know, or daughter. You know, uh, I got daughter. a boy. That's oh, you know, I got a boy. Got gotcha, you, Jay. Right. So <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, so it's like it, it, it's it is a tool. You know, it is a medication, but it is also a, a recreational uh, a release as well. And that's the beautiful thing about it. It's unlike anything else. And it's it's really hard not to not to kind of be be an advocate, you know, for something that's just so powerful and so positive. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you're a great example of, of how you can use it as a tool to better yourself and, and to succeed with it. So, yeah, yeah you just props. can't you can't make it everything right. You can't. That's right. Because some people do smoke it too much and then they just sit there and they get nothing done in their lives, right? And you're like, it's That's not right. good for you, man. Like, yeah, Let certain people, I feel like it's 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 the chemicals in everybody's body, how something will yeah. react different. And some people become lethargic fucking bumps in the log like that melted girl you know, in the drug just, commercials. You, know? you just got to keep control. Keep <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, That's and cool. it's just like anything, anything in moderation. I do consume yeah. a lot of cannabis, but I think over There's the years, my tolerance that. has gotten... Yeah higher too but at the same time it's like no one to hold them no one to fold them and then in a case mm -hmm. of directing people you're, you're like the manager plus you're the creative yeah. mind yeah. Well, you, so yeah. you're, you're like the boss in the situation so i always put stone is successful is like the, the moniker i go by and it's hard to do that if you can't do the successful part 
So That's you got to right. make sure that you That's find right. a fine in between, <laughs> you know, it's tough sometimes. I think with, with this industry in the cannabis space, a lot of people do use it as a crutch in terms of feeling like anything they do has to have weed with it. But just like you're saying with the writing, it's a tool. It's a can be a performance enhancer if you use it the right way, because with how you're writing, you're using this to kind of connect with the cannabis community. We're getting in that single one minded kind of thing. And that's hard to do with any other substance or any other thought process, you know? Yeah. It's, it's cool, true. man. It's yeah. true. I, I, mean, I do want to ask you a question in regards to the the weed that's featured within movies, right? What is it? Is it just prop weed? Is it fake stuff, CBD, or like, is it actual weed in some of these movies people are actually consuming and getting high? Because I've heard stories of that too. Snoop, when he smokes uh, uh, in a movie, is smoking real weed. <laughs> Um, you know, when we made Dukes of Hazard, we did a we did a little extra scene at the end uh, where Willie Nelson is Uncle Jesse and he's smoking weed out behind the barn. And um, I, we, you know, the prop guy got Willie some fake weed, which is just this. It's the stuff that smokes, but it doesn't. It doesn't too high it's not even it's not it's it's not hemp it, i don't know what the hell it is it's it's, <laughs> it's this stuff and willie's like i'm not smoking that that shit's bad for you and i was like <laughs> okay and he goes he, i said so so he, he, it's gonna be real stuff he goes it's all i smoke and i'm like all right well all right so i said to the producer i'm like why don't you take the day off and um, <laughs> and i got a real minimal crew and we went out behind the fucking barn and and he's smoking he's smoking a real joint and he goes get in here get in here and i'm like oh man you so got i got it. in there and i'm like smoking this joint with willie nelson and i'm like okay well it's the end of the day and uh and uh, we did a bunch of takes and i was like that was the only time i've ever directed uh uh while high uh Hell of a story I, to do. I, I Smoking with Willie brothers. Nelson. Like, I told fuck. Warner Brothers, I'm like, guys, I apologize. It's not something <laughs> I would ever do, but the, the man demanded I come in there and I'm like, oh, so I did, you know, what do you want from me? So anyway, so that was the one scene. Uh, but yeah, he he won't, he won't, you know, he only ever smokes the real stuff. So in Beer Fest, um, I can't remember if he's smoking in Beer Fest. Well, now he's not smoking at all. Now he's at not, the, he's at the end of Beer Fest. To yeah he smoked at the end of beer fest i think that yeah, was what yeah. we yeah so also, that's also also real weed real. Yeah, see and yeah, that's that's fucking weed. awesome i because love he that, won't man. do it he's like i'm not doing it so really that's yeah. right. man, how could you turn him down like that's such a story <laughs> as you tell your grandkids you'd be like yeah weed's real cool nowadays huh well guess what <laughs> and your grandpa smoked with uh sir willie nelson like, <laughs> it's almost like we had uh we had tommy chong on the podcast and uh, mm. we spoke with him you know that was kind of yeah. i smoked with tommy i smoked oh, with yeah. tommy and cheech and those guys and snoop great Dogg guys. and great guys you know that's what not- i'm saying mount rushmore man you're you, you guys have worked your way into that place and like oh. because like, I wouldn't say you've been the underground community, but it just seemed more like real stoners compared to a lot of this shit. I'm like, gimmicky. They'll show the high and everyone's like tripping like they're on shrooms and shit. I'm like, what right, the fuck right. are they doing? You know, Seth, so to see uh, you guys, Seth Rogen's a real deal. Exactly, yeah. He's another one, yep. too. Yeah, Seth Rogen's yeah. killed it, too. So that's what I'm saying. Like, there is some people who cater to this side of stuff, but it's like it's very yeah. few. It is very far in between. Few. And, and then there is no more weed entertainment. You know, it's mm-hmm. like yes, you are getting. We are getting. Uh, I told you I'd make bit. weed fest. How many more times? Are we're gonna keep pushing it. We're gonna keep pushing it. So, so I. Uh, <laughs> uh, you muted so, yourself. So, you yeah, so yeah, I hit. I got excited. Get, I hit my elbow fest, on the keyboard. Yes. I was like, weed fest. You know, so you know, we're, we're coming up on the hour, Jay. You've got so you've got you've got the, the vouch fault. You've got the uh, uh, weed Easter weed Sunday, fest. Weed Easter fest. Sunday. What 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 are you working on? What you got going on, man? Uh, and, in the uh, hot where spot. where can everyone find you at um, the hottest spot? I mean, <laughs> we have a movie uh, called Quasi, uh, which is a broken lizard film um, that's going to come out on Hulu in I guess in the springtime. I'm hearing, um, and it's uh, a 13th century French uh, movie where I play the king of France. Paul Soder plays the Pope. <laughs> Steve Lemmy plays the Hunchback. Uh, and <laughs> it's a be political good. assassination type thriller comedy. Um, and it feels like a Monty Python movie. Uh, 
with British accents and the whole fucking thing. Um, nice. <laughs> swords, crowns. Oh my god! Swords. Yes. Yes. So we're gonna we're gonna come out with that movie in the spring. Uh, if you're not smoking for that movie, you're out of your mind because um, <laughs> uh, it's uh, ridiculous. Uh, oh, and yeah. then we're gonna shoot Super Trooper Three in the springtime. And you know, I'm 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 busy writing two different golf movies because I'm intending to make the second and third best golf movies of all time. Ooh. Um, and uh, you know, that's what I'm spending my time on. Oh yeah, exciting. best golf movies all. Day. I got Happy Gilmore. Where do Second you got me? Third. Caddyshack. <laughs> Second and third. Caddyshack. Okay, after, Caddyshack. After Caddyshack okay. is one. Okay. Okay. I'm going to try to get in above Happy Gilmore if I can with the two. Okay. And three. Okay. I like okay. this. Hey, nice. it's ambitious. I love it. I love it. I love it. That's awesome. Are you doing anything on social media? Is uh, you you're on no, stand up you know, too? Like I'm I'm uh, I'm, a sta- I'm a stand up comic too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm I'm yeah. uh, doing any shows? Uh, you know, no. I mean, I'm 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 doing a show in. Uh, Somewhere around San Diego, I think in October. I, I don't know what the dates are yet, but uh, I got to get my jokes all ready for that. Uh, and uh, you know, I'm on I'm on Instagram, I'm on I'm on Twitter, but I I, I you know, Vouch Vault is the thing. I'm trying to build this thing. I'm going to try to change change the world a little bit. Well, I think oh, we're, yeah, you're going to get our assistance, man, because uh, we, we can vouch for the Vouch Vault. It sounds pretty damn awesome, man. There and you go. so, yeah, I've already downloaded it, and we've, we I were, got it on we're my live phone. I got to make an account. 150 plus people here and and many nice. of them said they downloaded it and we're gonna the this will go live to thousands and i'm, I'm sure there'll be more millions millions Million. <laughs> millions jay what an absolute pleasure man to have you on the show thank man. you i uh, appreciate it you're a hell of a guy you're a hell of an actor you're funny and uh man an absolute legend in the cannabis space so this was a this was a notch off my bucket list i know i can speak for Fuck the, yeah, for the other two here uh, we really appreciate you, man. Thank and, you, man. Thanks man, so yeah. much. Big shout out to It's Be Your Dig setting it up. Happy birthday, brother. Appreciate you. Happy birthday. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, man. Yeah. Awesome. yeah, we'll have to do it again soon. If we get uh, on Cali, we'll be out there next year again. Maybe for Green Street, we'll see what's going on. But maybe yeah. Lincoln will smoke some. I'm going to try out your flower. And again, man, Michigan, yeah. we, could, we could get it going over here. How about your mm-hmm. boy? We'll have to link. Maybe I'll talk with your people. Cool, buddy. Thank you. Oh, Sweet. Yeah. Guys Bye on now. Twitch. Thank you so much for watching today. We appreciate all the love from everyone, all the subs, all the followers. Thank you so much today, guys. Don't forget, you can follow this or see this video live or recorded on YouTube on From the Stash podcast. We thank you guys every single week for tuning in. You'll see us again back here next week, Thursday at the regular time, 2 p.m. Central. But until then, on behalf of myself, Jay, our guest, Rob and Chris, we'll see you soon. Peace. Peace.